Hi and welcome back to Cheeky Crypto. My name is Nick and today guys we're going to be jumping down into the world of XRP, taking a look at what's been going on with the price action, where I think things are heading next and all that wonderful stuff as I get into the video. If you find it useful and informative, smash that like button. I do appreciate that. If you are new to the channel, then why not go ahead and subscribe, tap the bell, select all the notifications and in doing so you will be kept up to date with everything that we do here at Cheeky Crypto. Right, with all that said done out of the way, let's jump right down into this one. Right, so XRP paired up with USDT, this is the BitGet spot exchange on the one hour time frame. Okay, so this has smart money concepts and I've also started to layer in a little bit of the Elliott wave on there as well. So you can kind of see a bigger picture. So let's go ahead and just reflect on a few things in here, right? So we have a fair value gap. That's this green area right in here. Uh, this is basically 47.331 to 48.1. 142. Uh, this essentially is an area of imbalance in the order books. Let's just jump over into BitGet and talk about that just briefly for anyone who is new. Let's just go from ADA over to XRP uh, and we'll go to XRP USDT. So this is the spot exchange um, for XRP USDT pair. And uh, you can see obviously we've got the trading view chart with all of our analysis on here as well. Okay, so the one in question is this one right in here. Um, I'm going to make this yellow so it's easier to see. There you go. All right, so this is the fair value gap in question at the moment 47.331 to 48.142 this is created from an imbalance in the order books essentially here large buy order came in or buy orders came in at 47.331 but they couldn't be filled they couldn't be filled until price moved upwards and found sellers at 48.142 okay and as such the price moved from the low side to the high side in order to be able to fill those buy orders by finding the sellers and as such the gap in price was left behind this gap gap represents an area where the market was not liquid okay and what we mean by this is a liquid market is a place where uh, or a market where buyers and sellers can transact and price is not affected okay that's a highly liquid market something that you know xrp is kind of going after they want a very stable market with high liquidity because what they want is the odl to work right they want instant transfers across borders and all that kind of stuff and that requires a highly liquid market lots of participants buying and selling okay and when you have an illiquid market you have it uh, very difficult to buy and to sell okay and when it's really difficult to buy and sell you see price moving more volatile or it has more volatility to it and it jumps from the high side to the low side and from the low side to the high side and so forth right and that's not very good for things like odl because obviously it requires a highly liquid market to be able to transact with minimal impact on people's um uh, values of those transfers right so very important that we have a highly liquid market for odl to work for a highly liquid market to exist for xrp then we need um, essentially a lot of participants buying and selling and we need a very stable market okay not a volatile one okay so when it comes to odl and uh, liquidity and understanding why liquidity is very important to markets it helps us understand you know what what's driving uh, driving the price uh, supply and demand imbalances and when you see a supply and demand imbalance in your order books it creates these fair value gaps the fair value gaps are just a representation of pockets of illiquidity and when you see the pockets of illiquidity well price wants to go back and put liquidity down there and we see this time and time again and we can see it all over the place where we have all those ones kind of grabbed out already this is the one that's most recent and the one that i think is likely to get grabbed next now guys if you haven't yet checked out BitGet, why not check it out the affiliate link is in the description down below it's a fantastic platform uh, that has xrp on spot exchange which means you can buy it and withdraw it into your own cold storage device um and again, guys, this I use this platform. It is I use it for 100% of my leverage trading and 90 to 95% of my spot trading. So if you guys haven't already checked it out or signed it up to BitGet, why not check out the affiliate link in the description below? If you do that link, then you will be eligible for up to $8,000 in rewards, depending on how much you deposit and trade on the platform. And of course, if you do use that link, we are running some trading competitions down in our Discord server. That's Cheeky Crypto, not affiliated with YouTube, not affiliated with BitGet. As 
something that we are running for our users of BitGet. We basically take that data. Anyone who has the best ROI percentage in the week period will win. Uh, why not check it out? More details are found in the Discord server. Um, and again, guys, I just think it's really important that we have e exposure to as many different exchanges as possible so that if something happens to your most favorite ones, you have at least a backup to go to. It's never a bad idea to have access to more exchanges, in my opinion. Uh, even if you're not necessarily using it right away, but you have it as a backup, I think it's worth it. But that being said, I've been using BitGet instead of using things like Binance, uh, instead of using KuCoin, instead of using Gate.io, instead of using Coinbase. Something that I didn't think I would do. I thought I'd be you know, a really heavy Binance user for the majority, but actually I don't miss it. And that sounds pretty bad. Um, maybe I'll go back when everything dies down after the SEC and stuff. But for now, BitGet is my go-to platform. If you haven't yet signed up to it, I think you're missing out. Check it out. Link in the description below. Let's jump back down to the charts. So obviously knowing that we have this fair value gap is important because we haven't filled it. We've gone into the gap, but we haven't filled the gap. As in, we have to go all the way down to the low side at 47.331. And from an Elliott Wave theory point of view, well, what do we see? Well, we can see that we have already kind of completed out a three wave pattern to the upside. We can go ahead and do our sense checks on this as well. Okay. Uh, no, not like that. I can't come back down here there we go um so if we move this over to here we can see we've come up to the one to one a little bit a little bit higher than one to one but not higher than 1.236 very typical of a c wave structure and we can see that we're moving down this move to the downside here doesn't yet look to be complete and it looks like we still have a little bit further to go uh, more specifically an a wave has come down a b wave has come up but our c wave hasn't gone down to our typical areas between 46.8 Eight zero and forty seven point three two two. Let me draw a little yellow box on there, for example, and I'll show you what that might look like uh, right in here. And I'm going to head and make it yellow. Okay, and then I'm going to go delete the fibs. Okay, and we can see this is the area where we're likely to bring this C wave down to. Okay, and then this move to the downside would completely fill out that fair value gap. But I still think we can push up higher. I still think that is something that is going to happen here. We are just talking about the micro movements on the smaller time frame. I still think a move to the upside is happening here on XRP. It's just going to take a lot longer than a lot of people are willing to kind of acknowledge. But it is happening. If we move down into our range here, you can see that there is still this targeted range a little bit higher. I think that has changed a little bit. So I'm just going to remove that one off because I do think we have finished this one just here. Okay. And looking at this, we are kind of coiling up but i think we're going to be breaking down uh, on this one so just keep a little bit of uh, uh yeah keep that in mind i think essentially there's a bit of a trend line in here if we were to lose this uh, then i do think we are likely to kind of move on down from there as you can kind of see we're kind of coiling up into this little apex and uh, i think the next move will be uh, to the downside just for that their fair value gap and it might not even be a very deep one as i said like 46.8 and then potentially from there we shoot back up again uh, because that next move to the upside i think is inevitable now if i come over to the daily you can see it here right we're talking about a move up towards 61.78 to 66.65 i'm just going to do some sense checks on that because things may have changed ever so slightly and just move this over to here no nope, still good uh, so for the most part that's where that first move is after that's complete we'll have a healthy correction to the downside from here and then we'll move back up again and we'll take out that larger box that one being 79.91 and 93.76 so on our daily time frame we can see here that everything is kind of playing out in that particular direction. Now, I do have a couple of concerns. Uh, my concerns are that momentum is not supporting this move to the upside yet. And that could change. But for the most part, we can see here down at the bottom on our stochastic, this is not a good sign. The fact that that stochastic RSI is moving as fast as it is from the oversold to the overbought area, yet our price action is not moving very well. It's just an indication that volumes are incredibly low. It's basically an indication that people are not interested in buying XRP. And that is a problem because it's the only way that we're going to be pushing up there is for that price action uh, or that uh, volume to come in, that demand to come in to create an imbalance in the supply range uh, so that we can start pushing price up higher. Um, and if I come over to the volume side, you can see the volumes are not impressive. And that is a problem. So we're going to have to keep a close eye on that. 
do have hidden bullish divergence down here so we are still looking at that as a potential move upwards um, but the momentum is a problem so maybe that will change in time um, everything is still technically valid but there is a couple of things that are starting to kind of wave their red flags to say we should probably be starting to pay a little bit of attention here to potentials that this is not going in a direction that it is perceived to be at the moment so a little bit of caution but for the most part still valid uh, that we are looking for a move to the upside now i think that's everything for today i don't think there's anything else to go into in the xrp front for today so i'll kind of leave this one there um, and come back again tomorrow with any further updates on the price action so if you have found it useful and informative smash that like button i appreciate that if you're new subscribe and uh, guys don't forget to join us down in discord links in the description below until the next one though guys have a fantastic day we are not financial advisors. None of what we have communicated early or in writing here should be considered as financial advice. It is not. Do your own research before investing in any digital asset or affiliate offers and understand that investing in any crypto is risky. If you do, you need to be prepared to risk your entire investment. This video is an information and entertainment advice only. All other videos are strictly personal opinions. Please make sure you do your own research and never take our opinions for financial advice. There are multiple strategies and not all strategies fit for people. Our videos are not financial advice.